Blonde was directed by Andrew Dominic and stars Ana de Armas as Marilyn Monroe. And this is a movie that has been doing the circuits on the film festivals for, for a few weeks now. And so I was looking forward to talking about it because I heard some comments on the internet. This film, based on the novel by Joyce Carol Oates of the same name, essentially tells the story of Marilyn Monroe and her rise to stardom, but also the trials and tribulations that came along with it, the personal tragedies that she went through. And it tells that in a very disturbing manner at points, leading to a movie that was, well, we'll talk about it a little bit more right now. This is a bit of a landmark review for the channel. Number one, this movie is rated NC-17, which if many people don't know, NC-17 is the rating that is given when something is so extreme that only audiences over the age of 17 can see it. It's not like a rated R scenario where you have to be, you know, with a parent or guardian if you're under 17. In this case, if you're not 17, you're not entering the theater. Number two, this is a movie that I'm reviewing on this channel, which is NC-17. This is the first ever NC-17 movie I've ever reviewed on this channel. There is a third thing, but we'll get to that later on in the review. I was interested in this movie though, because I like Ana de Armas as an actress. I think Andrew Dominic is a very good director. I mean, Jesse James is a great film. I also thought Killing Them Softly was not too bad. And his work on Mindhunter was also really impressive. And with Blonde, the directorial approach is one that is going to be polarizing for sure. I think as a movie, it's incredibly well made. I mean, it's well directed and it looks spectacular. It's gorgeously shot. And the performance that De Ana de Armas gives is nothing short of fantastic. She is excellent in the film. And regardless of what you feel about this movie, you're gonna walk out of it definitely praising her. She is giving it 110% every time she's on screen. And the performance is honestly Oscar nomination worthy. Whether or not it's going to happen, we'll see. But the movie itself is is a tough one to talk about because as I mentioned, it's taking a look at the lowest moments of Marilyn Monroe's life and not exactly in the most flattering way. There are a lot of sequences where you're gonna see something which is incredibly uncomfortable and distressing and it'll make you not want to keep looking at the screen. And I won't lie to you, if, if this was on Netflix, which is going to be in a few days, it's a tough watch, especially in one sitting. Like there are points where you'll want to get up and just sort of go away. But since this was in a theater, you know, you have to sit through the entire two hours and 46 minutes of film, which like I said, is not the worst movie I've seen this year or anything. It's not the best movie I've seen this year either. It's a movie that's hard to kind of gauge. I'm not really sure exactly where I land on this movie, but it was a very visceral experience. The movie definitely has the NC-17 rating locked because this movie is definitely not something I would recommend for younger ages. In fact, I have a hard time thinking I'd recommend it for most people because like I said, the experience of watching it is so miserable and it's almost like it's distressing. I mean, the word that I'm gonna keep coming back to is that because this movie is so locked and loaded with that, which is somewhat of a shame, especially because Marilyn Monroe probably deserved a lot better than this. I mean, there are other ways to look at it too. The movie highlighting the fact that she deserved better than this, and that this is what the cards that she was dealt. But at the same time, the book based on Joyce Carol Oates' account, which has been said to be a bit fictionalized and exaggerated, when you look at it from that perspective, you also think, well, obviously some stuff's going on over here. So it's hard to say this movie is a biopic. It feels like an account of a character, of a person, excuse me, uh, in, in our history, in pop culture, but it's, it's a version of that story. Now, you could probably argue that this is not the first time this has happened. I mean, last year we had Spencer. That's not exactly how that you know weekend went down. And she's not exactly seeing the things that we're seeing as audience members. The difference, however, you understand the movie's ideas and approach and why it's doing what it's doing. With Blonde, there are sometimes crises of faith and somewhat of identity because you can't really figure out why we're still seeing it the way we're seeing it and sort of the messaging which the film is also going for gets a little muddled in the process because it feels like it's trying to tell you multiple different things but it doesn't seem to land on any one of those things in quite the spectacular fashion that i feel like it intends to now if you end up thinking otherwise fine 
Again, it's not the kind of movie which I feel like everyone's going to have a unanimous consensus on. At the moment, I believe it has a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes, and that sounds about right. This movie is going to be incredibly divisive, in audiences' cases, maybe even more so. I'm actually more interested in seeing how many people are able to watch it the entire way through, even with pauses if necessary, and are actually able to finish up the movie, or turn it off within the first 20-25 minutes. There's a likely scenario that that's going to happen, and if that does, it would not surprise me in the slightest. Because like I said, it's not a movie that I find myself really recommending to people. Like, if I have to ask someone, you know, like, hey, did you see Blonde? I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, go ahead, check it out, enjoy yourself. You know, it's not the kind of movie that you can do that for. Even if I loved it, I would have probably been in the exact same boat. I know for a fact that I don't want to see it again. I do praise Ana de Armas' performance. It has a great score, too, by Nick Cave and Warren Ellis. Uh, it has beautiful cinematography. Andrew Dominic directed it well, but... When it comes to the way the story is told and when it comes to other aspects of it, the film's such, you know, ultra cynical approach that it has, in particular when it comes to a couple of scenes, one in particular that I think earned it the NC-17, it's, it's a tough watch. It's, it's really uncomfortable and it's... I was actually silent for a while after I walked out of the theater because I just really didn't... I didn't really know what exactly to say about it. There were a lot of thoughts going around in my head and a lot of things that I I wanted to touch upon, but I'm not sure I can without going into some serious spoilers. There is something in the movie that in particular is 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 so disturbing to the point that it happens multiple times. And I know what the movie is going for, but the handling of it is bound to be incredibly divisive. There are going to be so many people who are going to be very upset with how this is tackled. And I completely understand. And I don't know how many people in my theater enjoyed it. I mean, or like I said, probably no one. But I'm not sure how many people in, liked it. You know, a very quiet theater. People were walking out. But I do know for a fact that after that ended, when the credits were rolling, for a while nobody moved. Everyone was just sort of sitting there frozen because it just leaves this sort of impact on you. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good impact. It's just trying to figure out what to say immediately after watching that. So I don't know. I know this review is incredibly vague and very vague sounding, and I know I'm not really doing it justice in terms of like what I thought of it, which is my thoughts are all over the place. But I'm curious to hear if anyone has watched it, does intend on watching it, what they're going to think about it, what their thoughts are going to be. And I'm looking forward to seeing that over the next few weeks, which leads me to the third landmark moment of this review. There is no grade because I really don't know what number to give it. It's just it's a movie that I'm still really just trying to like put together in my head. Like I said, I'm not either on the love or hate side. I'm somewhere in the middle, but it's a very conflicted middle. My, I'm going through like four or five numbers right now in my head. But I, 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 I don't know. Maybe, maybe somewhere down the line, I'll have a proper cemented grade in my mind. But as of right now, I'm just going to leave it at... I saw it. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon. As always, if you like this, please do subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the movies.